Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting recent new media tutorial we're going to be taking a look at how to make your drums sound better with some aggressive EQing. Now if you don't already know this technique then you're in for a treat because it is going to take your drums from sounding like a garage band to sounding like a, you know, Leet Studio Pop Record. Not really, but it'll, it'll make you a huge difference in your mix whenever you learn about this. And the basic concept is whenever you place down a mic you're not wanting to get the whole frequency range of everything especially for drums. You're putting a mic here to get the attack of the snare drum or the, the little chink of the hi-hat. And your hi-hat mic is still going to pick up the rest of the kit too a little bit. So this is going to be just cutting all that out so your drums sound... Actually, they manage to sound bigger and better while having less stuff going on. So you can actually like have a mix. So here is just the you know basic levels laid out and some panning of some drums I recorded earlier. And you can hear... You know, it sounds kind of like I recorded it in a garage, which I didn't. And we want it to sound, you know, a much poppier, nicer kind of sound. And what we're going to do is we're gonna just going to EQ the balls off of it. So I'm going to turn off Quick Link real quick and solo the kick in, which is just a 58 right inside the hole of the microphone. Add an EQ, use Studio EQ here. And so that sounds pretty bad, but we're just going to take all the middle out because really just wanting that low end and that attacky part. And we don't even need as much low end. I'm going to leave it in there because, you know, bumping. Now, here is the kick out, which is just a little homemade sub kick microphone. Just going to go ahead and add a little EQ on here. And we're going to play this through. So we don't need any of that high end stuff. So it's going to go ahead and add a little, you know, low pass here. Change it to cut. And now combine these two together and you get. So just real quick before and after these guys, turn quick link on, select both these guys. So that's before and that's after. There's a couple thousand dollars worth of difference in there sound wise, I think. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the snare drum. Let's turn quick link off and Add another little EQ in here. We're gonna play this and... So let's think, what do we want from our snare top mic? Since we have a bottom also, the top is probably gonna be, you know, that more stick attack sound and the body part of the sound. So we don't need low end. I'm just gonna go ahead and high pass, you know, most stuff here. It sounds like our fundamental is somewhere around 200. and emphasize that a little bit and you could turn on the spectrum and see but oh nice nailed it but really try and like hear things out for yourself because that'll speed you up way faster and you won't be relying on looking at stuff you can use your ears when you mix because people who use their ears when they mix in my experience are better than people who use their eyes when they mix because that's just a little goofy so now what else do we need with this probably don't need as much of this middle And then we'll keep a little bit of attacky stuff. We're getting some hi-hat in there. So we might even take that out. Yeah, because we've got a snare bottom, which will be our high end. So we'll go ahead and turn this guy on. Add another little EQ in here. And play it, play it again. So even though that kick does sound great in there, let's cut it out. So that's real nice and attacky. That might be a little bit bright, but we'll see how that sounds. Add these two get together. Then add the kick in here. Turn this guy down just a bit. That's real snary, but I'm kind of digging it. Now, I don't have really any toms going on in this track, so we're just going to skip those for sake of tutorials. And then we'll go ahead and do our overheads. So let's go ahead and unsolo these guys. And with the overheads, I tend to like to take a lot of the lows out again still, even though, you know, technically they're probably supposed to catch the whole body of the kit, because that's what they told me in school normally, but I get better results if I take the low end out, because then you don't get 
the sort of wide muddy low end in your headphones or speakers because all that low end is concentrated with your kick drum because that's just boom right in the middle and these guys are the opposite of the middle so i'm gonna go ahead and low pass this guy high pass this guy sorry and i'm getting that more like snary cymbal-y sound i'll go ahead and just boost a little on the highs because i like drums that are way too bright and then we'll just go ahead and copy this over the other one and see if we have to change anything. I think that's sounding pretty cool. And our hi-hat, I bet you can guess exactly how much low end we need in that. So, whoop, boop, boo. And there's that. And now if we listen to them all together, Ahead and mute these guys there being some issues you see that is you know night and day difference and it didn't take very long and you can probably even set up presets if you just got this setting up to get you close well, let's go ahead and do one more thing just quick link there's with effects and just eq this is no compression no reverb just eqs and some cheap little microphones so that's without you know, that's cool, but if you want to get paid, you probably want to make it sound a little more like, you know, much tighter. And how does it manage to sound like bigger and fatter with less sounds in there, less frequencies? That's amazing, right? So take this little trick, apply it to everything. Basically low pass your entire <laughs> everything except for your kick drum and your bass. You know, don't, don't just do that, but, you know, kind of do just do that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what your feelings down in the comments below. I know I normally do video stuff, but really I was an audio guy before I was a video guy. So if you want to see more audio stuff, let me know. Because I've got tutorials out the wazoo that I could do in this. And I want to learn Cubase better because, you know, I switch around DAWs all the time. And Cubase is my latest project. And I'm really liking it. Also share this video with your friends because, you know, they might want to make their drums not sound like they're recorded in a garage or in my case, their living room. Also check out leastnewmedia.com slash products. If you're an audio guy, there's probably not much there for you. But if you're an audio guy who does video, then there's a lot there for you because we mainly do video stuff on Meast New Media. So once again, I've been Theo with Meast New Media. We have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.